Inside the human body, 37 trillion hardworking cells dedicate themselves to maintaining their host's health. Among them is Sylvie, a quirky red blood cell who's just starting her job of delivering oxygen and nutrients to her fellow cells. As she roams around, searching for the lungs, she feels slightly overwhelmed and unsure of her direction. To help her find her way, she decides to visit the map room. When Sylvie opens the door, she's shocked to find a bacteria lurking inside. The two stare at each other. In a panic, Sylvie slams the door shut. But the relentless bacteria breaks through the wall, determined to kill Sylvie and feast on her nutrients. Just when all hope seems lost, Chad, a dedicated white blood cell responsible for eliminating foreign threats, rushes in to save the day. A fierce battle ensues, with Chad struggling to overcome the cunning bacteria. Taking advantage of the chaos, the bacteria flings a shell to create a smokescreen, pinning Chad down and making its escape. Grateful for Chad's help, accepts his proposal to guide her to the lungs. As they journey together, Chad's threat receptor begins to act strangely, signaling the presence of a virus or bacteria nearby. But he cannot find anything on the way. They eventually reach the lungs, where they part ways. It's only then that Chad's receptor stops shaking, and he realizes something is off. Chad's eyes widen as he understands the truth. The bacteria was hiding inside the box Sylvie had been transporting. Meanwhile, the bacteria emerges from the box, mockingly thanking Sylvie for delivering it right to its target, the lungs. It lunges to attack her, but Chad swoops in from above, ready for a rematch. The bacteria tries to escape, wreaking havoc in its wake, but Chad is hot on its trail. Despite his best efforts, Chad struggles to defeat the bacteria, which is protected by a tough outer shell. Refusing to give up, he cleverly lures the bacteria into the bronchial tubes, where he tricks it into stepping on a red line that triggers an alarm. With a triumphant push of a button, Chad traps the bacteria inside a ball. Sylvie and Chad watch in awe as the ball is loaded into a missile and launched out of the body with a forceful sneeze, saving the host body from this threat. Some hours later, Sylvie finds herself lost once again as she struggles to deliver nutrients. Out of the blue, Grace, her kind and experienced senior, appears and offers to guide Sylvie to their destination. But suddenly, a rumbling throws the cells off balance, and Sylvie can't help but ask Grace what's happening. Before they can react, an explosion in the distance leaves a massive hole in the city's center. As Sylvie scrambles to her feet, she and the other blood cells are pulled towards the gaping void. Just when it seems like all hope is lost, Chad, the heroic white blood cell, swoops in and saves Sylvie. They recognize each other from a previous adventure, and Chad brings her back to safety. Desperate for answers, Sylvie asks Chad about the situation, and he reveals that they're dealing with an abrasion, a painful skin injury like a scratch. If they fall through the hole, they won't be able to return to their world. Chad assures Sylvie that the wound will be patched, but first, they must confront the germs that threaten their host. Glancing over the wall, he spots a germ about to attack and quickly pushes Sylvie and Grace to safety, narrowly avoiding a lethal strike. The germs, led by the menacing Aureus, swarm in for battle. As Chad skillfully injures one of the attacking germs, he orders the cells to run for their lives. They quickly warn the other red blood cells about the impending danger. While Grace is alerting them, two germs barge in demanding that the red blood cells surrender their nutrients. Cornered and afraid, the red blood cells attempt to escape, but a venice valve blocks their path. One of the germs grabs a red blood cell, threatening to harm her if their demands go unmet. In the nick of time, a white blood cell slashes the germ, while two others eliminate the second attacker. Meanwhile, Chad battles four germs at once. One of them strikes him from behind, causing him to drop his dagger. Thinking fast, Chad seizes the germ's thorn arm and uses it to smash the germ's face, killing it. Chad wonders why the germs chose to fight them when they could have easily spread out. In the midst of his thoughts, Chad receives a call from a fellow white blood cell in need of help. He quickly rushes to his colleague's location, curious about the germ's plans. Upon arriving, Chad finds the white blood cell overwhelmed by the germs but manages to save him and two red blood cells. Just in time, backup white blood cells show up as Aureus, the germ leader, summons even more germs. Aureus boldly attacks the white blood cells, taunting them about her knowledge of their defenses. She disarms one white cell and wounds another before attempting to strike Chad. However, she fails to hurt him. Chad retorts that while she researched white blood cells, she overlooked the essential platelets that help stop abrasions. As if on cue, the platelets arrive, tiny and unassuming like kindergarten children. They thank the white blood cells for their hard work and begin to descend into the abrasion, creating a gluing net to seal and cover the wound. 
A germ informs Aureus of their predicament, and she realizes that the platelets have clotted the abrasion, preventing her from summoning reinforcements. With the abrasion covered, the white blood cells easily defeat the remaining germs. Chad delivers the final blow to Aureus before falling into the fibrin net. Sylvie personally thanks Chad, but as she tries to leave, she discovers her hand is stuck to the net. She watches as the platelets drag everyone away, including her and Chad. Chad explains that until the outer cell wall is repaired, cells are used to cover the hole created by the abrasion. Sylvie asks how long they'll be in this state, and Chad tells her it'll take around three days. Once the clot dries, it will become a scab. Three days, Sylvie is finally released and returns to her normal job. Grace meets up with her and reveals she is concerned about Sylvie's knack for attracting trouble, but Sylvie reassures her that she'll be fine. They go on their separate ways, and a germ ambushes Sylvie, demanding her oxygen supply. Trapped in a dead end, she's saved by a mysterious cell in a yellow hazmat suit that punches the germ away. The yellow guy starts beating the germ into a pulp and finishes it off with a shower before awkwardly running away. Chad, sensing an enemy comes out of the vent and notices it's already dead. After learning from Chad that the yellow person is a macrophage, a white cell that protects and cleans up the body, Sylvie and Chad part ways, and she encounters the macrophage again in the lump. Suddenly, a swarm of aureus germs bursts from the previous abrasion. Caught in the middle of another invasion, Sylvie finds herself under attack by an aureus germ, but Chad comes to her rescue. His fellow white blood cells join the fight, exterminating many germs and thinning their ranks. However, the germs unexpectedly merge into a giant version of themselves, seeking revenge for their fallen cousin from the previous encounter. The giant germ easily overpowers the white blood cells with its deadly attacks and protective shield. The giant germ uses its shield as a net and caught the white cells on it, giving them electric shocks and blasting them against the floor. Just as the giant germ is about to deliver a finishing blow, a group of macrophages appears. Since they're out of the blood vessels because this is the lungs, they can go back to their normal clothes, all revealing to be beautiful women dressed up as maids, but don't let them deceive you. They swiftly overpower the germs using their blunt weapons, killing the germs as their pure strength forces the giant germ to split apart. In the aftermath, they simply clean up the place and move on, without knowing there's a bigger problem. Summer began, and an extreme heat wave causes a major inner drought in the body. Sylvie and Grace walk through the veins, noting the unbearable heat. They remain optimistic, believing the body will soon start sweating to cool the temperature down. Suddenly, Chad appears and swiftly eliminates some nearby bacteria. Despite the sweltering heat, Chad can't remove his clothing due to job restrictions. They move to the resting area, where everyone waits for the body to start sweating. They find it odd that even though the sweating process has begun, the internal temperature isn't dropping. With the rising heat, the red blood cells start moving again, hoping it will help regulate the body temperature. As they travel through a dark and cramped tunnel, the body succumbs to dizziness caused by heat stroke and lack of water. A bacteria that triggers food poisoning emerges from a hole in the wall. But instead of fighting Chad, it flees to hide until the body weakens enough for it to spread. Chad chases after it, calling for backup. Two white blood cells come to his aid, but they fail to stop the bacteria. The bacteria taunts Chad while leading him on a chase until he collapses due to heat stroke. It cruelly continues taunting him, pouring tea on the ground in front of him, while explaining that if the body doesn't drink water, Chad won't be able to fight back. Chad, weak and beaten, is easily overpowered by the bacteria, who shows him parts of the city going up in flames before throwing him off a cliff. Chad manages to hold on with his knife, but the bacteria attacks him with its tendrils, proclaiming his defeat. Just as Chad's grip loosens and he falls, a needle pierces the sky and makes it rain. The doctors, noticing the host body's condition decided to deliver a nutrient transfusion that restores nutrients to the body. The bacteria, confused by the sudden turn of events and huge flood, is horrified when Chad emerges from behind and grabs its tail. Chad brutally kills the bacteria as Sylvie, Grace, and the platelets watch from afar. With the crisis averted, Sylvie takes Chad to cool down, and the cells continue their important work. A few days later, the body returns to normal, and Sylvie is busy depositing carbon dioxide to be turned into oxygen. Grace, feeling proud of Sylvie's progress, asks her to train Lily, a rookie red blood cell. Sylvie is surprised but remembers how other blood cells nurtured her, so she accepts the responsibility. Sylvie is impressed by how calm and collected Lily is, a stark contrast to her own more chaotic approach to the job. 
eager to teach Lily, Sylvie searches for her notes but ends up embarrassing herself. As she attempts to explain the basics, she realizes that Lily already knows everything, which only increases her embarrassment. The two begin their work together, but Sylvie struggles to find the right words to guide Lily. Meanwhile, Lily starts to believe that Sylvie is inefficient in her job. As they descend a lift, Sylvie takes a wrong turn and gets scolded by another cell. Continuing on their route, they encounter Chad battling a germ. Sylvie explains to Lily that white blood cells are friendly, but Lily argues that they confuse justice with violence. Sylvie is surprised by this perspective, as she sees white cells as friendly when they're not engaged in combat. Sylvie thanks Chad for his work, and he is surprised to see Sylvie training a newbie. Sylvie and Lily arrive at a delivery spot, where Sylvie tries to demonstrate the proper procedure but ends up annoying the cell instead. Lily reminds her of their delivery, and they continue their journey. However, Sylvie keeps taking the wrong path, even with Lily's reminders, which leaves Lily tired and disappointed. Sylvie starts feeling depressed, doubting her ability to train Lily properly. Wanting to improve, Sylvie examines a map and finally figures out the right direction. But Lily remains unimpressed with her struggle to understand a simple map. As the day progresses, the various cells go about their tasks until a massive explosion shakes the entire body. The shockwave is much stronger than expected, leaving Sylvie waking up amidst the ruins of the city with numerous casualties. Lily, too, has survived and is horrified by the devastation. Chad, carrying a survivor, meets up with Sylvie and Lily. He's unsure of the cause but informs them that all blood cells must head to the center of the body. Before they can move, however, a tide of red blood survivors sweeps them away, also known as blood pressure. Once at the center, the cells anxiously await an announcement about the emergency. It's revealed that the body took a blow to the head, causing a brain blood vessel to burst. All cells must immediately work to stop the wound. Lily is nervous, but Sylvie insists they must do their jobs without hesitation, as there is no time to waste. The body's temperature keeps rising, prompting a cold sweat to cool it down. Lily notices the change, but Sylvie urges her to stay focused on their work. Elsewhere, Chad fights off various antigens attempting to invade the body. He realizes he must be close to the wound site, but upon arriving, he is shocked to find out the body is losing too much blood as there are no red blood cells in the area. Chad searches for survivors but finds no red blood cells. Instead, he encounters a cell who informs him that the blood cells were sucked up by the wound, and there's no oxygen being delivered. This means the body will enter a cold state, causing all cells to slowly die off, and as a result also the host. Meanwhile, Sylvie and Lily arrive at the lungs, where they find a cell gasping for air. Sylvie tries to help, but Lily points out that many more cells are desperate for oxygen. They distribute oxygen to these cells and head off to collect more. As they do so, Lily also notices the absence of other red blood cells. When they return to the lungs, they find them pumping violently, with a large amount of oxygen awaiting delivery. Lily mentions there aren't enough red blood cells to carry the oxygen, but Sylvie reminds her they have a crucial task to complete, as everyone is relying on them to stay alive. The duo delivers oxygen throughout the body, helping the cells survive. When they reach the blood vessel wound, a platelet warns them not to get blown away. The wind makes Sylvie, Lily, and other blood cells uneasy. Elsewhere, tissue cells panic due to the lack of red blood cells. To compensate, they increase blood pressure, but this backfires and causes the red blood cells to fall into the wound, increasing blood loss. Scared, Lily receives encouragement from Sylvie not to look back. As a result of the heavy blood loss, the body temperature drops even further, and they find themselves facing snow. Sylvie and Lily struggle through a blizzard, but Lily collapses from the cold. She believes the situation is hopeless and that the body will die. Sylvie, however, insists on continuing to the end because it's their job. Despite Lily's protests, Sylvie forges ahead, determined to fulfill her duty. As everyone tries to survive the harsh conditions, the relentless blizzard becomes too much for Sylvie to handle and she collapses, feeling utterly useless. When she regains consciousness, she is astonished to find a red blood cell she has never encountered before. John, along with a whole group of unfamiliar red blood cells. Curious and concerned, Sylvie explains the dire situation they are all in, emphasizing the potential death of the body they are inhabiting. Horrified by the news, John takes charge and rallies the new red blood cells, motivating them to help deliver oxygen throughout the body. Their united efforts take the original cells by surprise, as they don't recognize these newcomers. Nonetheless, their invaluable assistance halts the blood loss, leading to a much-deserved celebration among the cells. Exhausted from her continuous efforts, Sylvie is caught by Chad, 
who thanks her for her unwavering dedication and hard work. Together, they ponder the origins of these new red blood cells. John shares his story, recounting how he and the others were suddenly sucked into a mysterious blue tube while they were working. Now, they're just thrilled to be serving a body again. Unbeknownst to the cells, a life-saving blood transfusion had been performed on the body. Determined to find Lily, Sylvie searches for her, only to discover that Lily has already stumbled upon the new group of red blood cells. Lily admits that she has learned that work isn't solely about knowledge, it also requires hands-on experience. Sylvie is flustered by this revelation, and soon realizes that she's actually talking to another red blood cell, causing even more embarrassment. With the body now safe, the cells work tirelessly to rebuild their society. Sylvie watches them with admiration as they carry out their various duties. She looks at a map to guide her thinking that she matured and gotten better at her job. But Chad points out that she's holding the map upside down. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.